Welcome to Oh, yes. Um, um, hear you. Oh, you hear me? Oh, that's good. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I'm from Maine. Uh, let's see, at the age of three, I've seen alien greys um, for weeks. My father ended up seeing him in front of our window after I kept telling them I keep seeing them. Uh, of course, they didn't believe me until then. Um, and then, like, a year and a half ago, I contacted MUFON and talked with a guy, and he said that if he could get someone to my house um, to study the tree that it was over, because, like, radiation or something messed with it and killed it all off. And, uh, let's see. Let's see. Um, like, two well, weeks we after that. Excuse me? Okay, yeah. I wanted to ask you, and you guys get back to your story real quick. How was the response when he called in to MUFON on their reaction um, on getting back to you and, you know, taking your story seriously? Well, he, I, you know, he sounded real interested, um, but where I live, they don't have many people in MUFON up in this region, so he was hoping that he'd get someone up here, and about two weeks later it went by and I had a black SUV come up my driveway and asked, um, you know, blah, blah, my name and all that. And I said, oh, yes, you know, that's me, you know. And they asked me if they could see the tree and get tree samples. And I told them, yeah, do you have a business, a MUFON card? And they said, oh, we don't carry them. Well, that's when I realized that the SUV that they were driving was not like a civilian one. Black it was an unmarked was, car? Um, yeah, I guess you'd say that. It had license plate, but like three numbers on it, and uh, two businessmen were like in suits. Are you and, uh, real clean cut, you know? And I knew that they weren't from MUFON, because most people from MUFON are like civilians, you know? They're clean cut, real military looking. Um, had like five antennas on the car, and when I when I asked them for a business card from MUFON, uh, they said, "Oh, we don't carry them." But we'd still like to see the tree. Now, at this, at this point, I didn't, you know, I wasn't even going to go there because I don't trust the government, um, you know, because I know if people do open their trap, um, they do get rid of them. Um, so, like, I'm, I'm really bugging on even calling you right now. Um, oh, hey, if you want to you keep it anonymous, we're not going to reveal your Well, uh, I, that's why okay. I didn't say my name. You just hear that the- I'm from Maine. Um, hey, let me just ask you, did these guys appear, like, do you really feel that, were they possibly men in black? Um, they looked too clean, you know, too clean shaven, too well hair done, you know, the hair was, you know, military style, you know, they, they looked, they looked CIA undercover, you know what I mean? Like, who drives around in a black SUV with tinted windows and, like, five antennas on it? You know, you know I, got a, I, got a, I got a theory about your yeah. encounter and who these people were. Can you stick around for a few more minutes? I want to get back to you and talk about uh, your theory, my theory about I think I know who visited you. Okay, can you stick around for a little bit more? Yeah. Okay, so just stick, hang on, and uh, we're going to take this other call. We'll get back to the the guy that possibly got in, in, uh, involved with gray encounters of aliens and and strange visitors shortly after he contacted MUFON. We're going to get back to that here real shortly, but we're going to take this call from uh, area code 310 LA. This is Blake Cousins. Welcome to Third Phase of Moon. Who am I speaking with? Yeah, hi, Blake. My name is Chris. Hey, Chris. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. So you're in LA. Have you showed up to any of the Robert Bingham UFO sightings? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm calling. I, uh, I promised Robert I was going to just chime in here uh, for a bit, and, um, you know, I've actually gone to two of his events now, Um, the first one in uh, downtown L.A., and then the second at Griffith Park, and uh, I just wanted to give credit to to what he's been doing, Um, and I, I really appreciate his kind of putting himself out there and putting himself on a limb, you know, where he's uh, exposes himself to some criticism and all the debunker stuff, but uh, I just wanted to uh, chime in a bit, and, and I was uh, the one who took a lot of the good photos from the um, 
event at Griffith Park. Hey, Chris, can you describe to our listeners right now what you think they were and what you uh, visually, what they look like? Well, the the first event in downtown LA at uh, at the MacArthur Park there, there were, I mean, you just, there's no explanations. I mean, he, he proved to me beyond a doubt uh, it was just pretty obvious, and everyone there, and it was really good energy. There was there was only about ten people at that event, maybe a few more, but that was just a, a really great experience, and I got to know Robert quite well. And uh, so those were sort of like orbs, uh, I guess you'd call it, you know, very bright, shiny light, something that's I I it's beyond me. It and even, even some of the debunkers that that go and show up. Uh, for example, Joe, I forget his last name, but he was there as well, and he'll tell you that he feels the same exact way. Um, unfortunately, you know, a lot of people came expecting, I, I feel, a little too much. Um, when Robert Bingham, he goes by the man who summons UFOs. He's not going by the man that brings down spaceships. They're unidentified right. flying objects most of the time up in the sky. When Robert's around, people are around, they're capturing it on film. And he's doing no more than just that. They're UFOs. Hey, I'm not saying they're aliens by any means. In my opinion, they possibly could be military drones spying on right. aliens. But they are uh, unidentified. Right, Robert? Right. Um, I don't think possibly that the military would do that. Uh, they got much better things to do uh, than follow me around and show that, well, you know, show up uh, when I say that they're going to show up. They're definitely not military. Uh, well, it's quite interesting. They're not in the skies at the time prior, but when you're doing them, that's all of a sudden when they show up. And like you, you just said, that they're not going to waste their time following one individual around. But it seemed, hold on, guys, guys I want to get back to this L.A. story, but I also want to get back to Maine about, you know, the military wasting their time following leads. Hey, it sounds like maybe they're not wasting their time. They're taking it very seriously on what's going on. And I wanted to get to this theory about who I think really visited Mark in this black SUV. Mark, are you still with us? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yes, okay. I'm here. Okay, so are you aware that Bigelow Aerospace did a underground contract with MUFON just a year ago? Really? Um, well, yeah, see, this is when all this went on. Well, okay, this is what... Bigelow Aerospace came in. Mr. Bigelow, billionaire, building space stations right now. And, uh, you know, they're operational up there. And he has the only right, in as far as the U.N.'s concerned, to weaponize space. You know, NASA, none of the agencies can bring weapons into space. But for some odd reason, since he's an independent contractor, he's the only guy that could bring weapons of some sort. But he's building these space stations up there. And he's really interested in aliens. He bought this ranch out there, I forgot at the what was the name of the ranch? Skinwalker Ranch, this famous place for alien sightings, UFO sightings. He bought the whole ranch and now he owns it. Nobody's allowed on there. Who knows what he's doing there, but he might have found something. But after he bought MUFON out for $750,000, he said, hey, MUFON, every information that you get, you're going to report it to me. And if we don't want it to get out to the public, we're, I'm going to take the information and deal with it. The right. U.S. The U.S. government, as far as the FAA was concerned, as far as pilots seeing UFOs in the skies, they refused to take, as of just recently, they changed the law that they cannot take testimony from U.S. pilots or any kind of pilots in aviation. If they say UFO, they cannot, they can't report it to anybody, but they can report it now to Bigelow Aerospace. So I really think some of these guys that visited you were, you know, employees of Bigelow coming okay. down and what was going on. Can you explain this uh, sighting? Uh, See, what um, this felt like when I was when it happened. Yeah, when I was three years old. Um, if you ever know what a trailer, an old-fashioned trailer is, they you, they have like small windows in some of the rooms. No, they're not. They're not wide and they're not tall either. You know, it's like a three feet wide by, you know, 10 inches, 12 inches. Uh, it was like a water closet. You could, like, put a dryer in there and wash it. That's all it was, but it was my room at the time. And I was three years old and kept telling my parents, I keep seeing gray men looking in my window and want me to go with them. And uh, 
I have gone with them. Um, I remember, like, they're, like, at my window, and my window is, mind you, five feet from the base of the trailer, and then there's another three feet before it even gets to the ground. And these little three-foot, three-and-a-half-foot people were looking through my window, um, real bright, bluish, white light uh, along with them, and one minute they're outside the window, the next minute they're in my room. And it, what I remember, it, it reminded me of a chopstick, like touching me on the forehead and that was it. And the next thing I know, I'm back in my room, um, running my parents' room to tell them. And they're like, oh, it's just a dream, it's just a dream. Go back to bed. Um, and that happened for months and upon months until uh, one day I'm in the ship looking out my window in front of the house and seeing my father in the bedroom. Um, and then the next second, I'm back in my room. Um, I run, ran out of my room to go to my parents' room to tell them, and my father met me in the living room. Um, and I was like, Daddy, did you see him? And he was like, yeah, I saw him. You know, but they wouldn't believe me until then. You know, and then... Um, Let's see, I was like 9 or 12, I think somewhere around there. Um, we're at, in Dover uh, watching a game out near the fields, and next to the field there's railroad tracks. And I remember two kids with like Catholic uniforms, and they looked human, but, you know, they, they didn't, you know what I mean? Their eyes were sort of bigger, and they wanted me to go play with them, so I went to go play with them. And next thing I know I'm laying back in this field with everybody and I'm bleeding brown blood from my nose um, you know I went to the emergency room and all that um, you know and like I've been openly telling people you know for years you know I've been criticized been called crazy and everything else and you know I still stick to my guns till this day you know that what I saw you know and I openly tell people you know, because they'll, they'll say, oh, that'd be awesome to see them. You know, I wonder if it's true. You know, so I'll openly tell people it, you know, because I believe it should be known. You know, people should know this, you know. I mean, there's... Everybody's got to come forward. It's a, it's a worldwide effort. It's a worldwide surge to get the information out so we could get disclosure. Mark, do you think maybe if when you're ready to come forward, if we could maybe get some cameramen on on the ground over there, look at some of the trace evidence, maybe get I mean, some the, interviews with you when you're ready. And, uh, you know, we want real people to come forward because that's, you know, that's what it's all I, about. Yeah, someone like that I could trust because I'm, I'm really bugged out on the whole black car thing. And, you know, I, I know that other people that have seen stuff have been wiped out, you know, taken off. Um, you know, well, the more for... the information gets out, the safer you become. You get it out. We're on a scale that we get it out so quickly, it's hard to cover up. We've never had any, uh, really, as of lately, since third phase of the moon's been up, any visitors from government officials. But we know they're watching. But yeah. what are they going to do? We're going to keep doing what right. we're doing. You I, know, mean, the, the tr- the... Go ahead. I mean, the truth. I mean, the 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 tree that the tree that this ship was over, you know, um, is was a pine tree, and this thing like died. Nothing, anything around it, everything around it died. The whole tree died, and it's still laying in my backyard today. No bark on it at all. No moss growing on, on it at all. You know, it, it's just sitting there. This is there's physical proof ready to be studied. There's this physical proof sitting right there. And the the pine trees behind that that tree that that got mainly hit, um, you could still see today um, the dead branches that were, I guess, radiated or you know chemically al- you know chemistry altered by the ship. Um, nothing, not no pine needles grow on it. Um, moss is now growing on it. You know, it's been over 30 years. But um, Robert. 
we got Robert, the UFO summoner, and um, other guests that witnessed his uh, events. Robert, do you have any uh, advice? Yes, I'd like, to, I, I'd like to speak on that. I believe this is all disinformation the government's putting out there to put the, uh, so to speak, uh, peekaboo or boogeyman and all that. I don't, I don't believe in this story at all, and that's my opinion. Um, you don't believe in my story at I, all? I, no, okay, not I'll, at all. Dude, I, I was really three years I, old, I all right, yeah, and seeing little gray men fiction, with big eyes looking at But I believe, but I believe that you're just working for the government. And I am working for the government? Dude, oh, I'm yeah. a civilian living in Maine, well, anyway, dude. Anyway, show the proof. Yeah, show take the that picture. guy off the air. He don't show, even know what he's talking about. He don't know me. You're, you're feeding this information to the public. Yes, I am, because everybody should know this. It's everybody should know that there are great men you. going out in this world abducting people. Oh, yeah. Taking yeah. Them. You got proof, okay. Sounds like I, a have, I, know, book I know it for a fact, sir. Oh, I yeah. I know it sure. for a fact. Oh, anyway, thanks, Billy. When they I'm speak to you telepathically. This is ridiculous. I don't want to be part of it. Yeah, part. you're ridiculous. Take get you off the air. You don't want to. Nobody should even listen to you. Okay, okay, dude. Uh, I know. I know what I've seen. I know what I heard, dude. I've seen them firsthand. If you if you plug your ears and talk, you can hear your voice inside the middle of your head. That's what it sounds like when they talk to you telepathically. Except it's not. Him, you know, Robert muffled. Bingham. He he had an opinion. He stated it, and you know, we're I'm not making any judgment here. You know, I you know I I've been ridiculed all my life on this, you know, and I still openly speak about it because I think everybody should know about it. And people that think that you know I'm a liar and I'm crazy, well, you know what? They're the ignorant ones that can't know that can't realize that if Mark, we're on no this people. planet alive and we're human beings and we have the technology to do what we want to do, why isn't there has to be other planets? that are way more advanced than us, that have, have been around the world long before us, have been to the moon before us. Hey, Mark, uh, you know, the you're not that the only ignorant. one that claims these, uh, these, these stories. They, they could be factual. They could be something in your mind. I'm not going to claim anything, but millions of other people around the world claim the same thing. Experts have done hypno hypnotic regression studies, and I'm sure if they did something, you wanted to be part of that. There's people to get in touch with. You look at some of our third phase of moon contacts. We've spoken with doctors that specialize in that. Hey, I just wanted to thank you, uh, Mark, for sharing your story. You keep in touch, and um, thanks again. Thank you. Appreciate and for uh, you know putting the you know, having an opinion. We appreciate that. Th thank you for at least believing in me and believing my story. And that that other man that don't believe in me. He, that man should even be on on your radio talk show. You don't even know what you're talking right. about. Hey, that's cool, Mark. You have a good night, and keep in touch when you're ready for us to uh, put the word out, and maybe we can help you out on uh, your end. Okay. Um, I, I, I would like, I would like that. I don't know how to get a hold of you on that, on on that part, but you get in touch with us via Facebook or Skype. Third phase of moon. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. You know, that's been, uh, you know, that was a heavy-duty debate, and there's always both sides. Debate is good. Debate is, gets progress done. We got another caller in, area code 516. We're going to get to you here shortly. And uh, I just wanted to say thanks to everybody listening to the radio show. And if anybody has any questions in regards to UFOs, you know, you could contact Third Phase of via Skype or Facebook. But hold on. Everybody's going to stick around for a little bit. Let's uh, let's go to 516 and uh see who this is and if they have any quick questions before we go to break. Welcome to Third Phase of Moon. Yeah, hi, uh, hi Blake. Uh, this is Russ Mayoran. I'm calling from Florida. Um, hey, I Russ just Mariano, want... how you doing? Hi, Blake. How's it going? Listen, uh, real quick, I know you've got a minute and 31 seconds left for this portion of your show, so I just want to back up the um, guy who was just on talking about his um, experience that he had, and I'd like to back it up with my story. When I was 15, this happened to me. And um, I, I just went to bed. I went into my room, and I was facing the wall. And it was about 2 o'clock in the morning, and it was the summer. And I was facing the wall when I went to bed, and I felt as if something was looking at me. So I looked towards my, I looked in the back of me, I looked towards the bedroom door. And there were these two short, three-foot, 
whatever they were, standing by the door. They were outside my door. Now, they didn't have big eyes like the other guy had seen. They had these big hats on that looked like Mexican hats. It was weird. Uh, and they had these, it looked like trench coats that went down from off their shoulders and straight down to the floor, but they were flat. You couldn't see any dimension in them at all. It was just like cardboard cutouts um, standing in the hallway. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I, I, I turned around. I, I said, no, nope, that's not there. can't be there. And then I turned back real quick, and they were inside the room, and I freaked out. They were standing by my dresser. And I, I pulled the covers over my head. I was like, you know, I act like a little girl. You know, I you know, pulled the covers over my head. And I felt something touch my foot. And I shot out from under the covers and grabbed the light and put the light on. And they were, they were gone. But things happen. I mean, you know, things do happen. And I, who knows what they are. But um, I so believe what that guy said. I mean, we. There were, I hope everybody calls in with the crazy stories that they've had because... There's something really serious going on. Hey, all right, that's all I have to say. Hey, appreciate the call in, and I'm sure you, even Robert might possibly say you work for the government. Not everybody has alien encounters or disinformation. Yeah, too bad. I wish he. I wish he would. I wish he yeah, would. I because, thought that. You know. I thought that. I. I felt that the person Mark's story from Maine was very genuine. He didn't come across. Yeah. Like he's manip- manipulative whatsoever, and he seemed genuine and scared. To put a little bit of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My hair, my arms rose up when he was, you know, talking about some of this stuff. It was quite impressive. Hey, appreciate it, Russell. You uh, get back Thanks. to us, uh, you know, on some of these I, other radio shows. Have, We're going to go. Yeah, I have, I have many other things to talk about. I'll call in from time to time and tell you other things that have happened. To me, so appreciate that it. I have seen. So, all right, all right, take care, Blake. Doing a great job. And uh, later. Thanks. Keep up. Uh, keep your eyes on the sky, Russell. And uh, I want to talk to uh, Chris one last time from Los Angeles. What did you think about that, uh, you know, the debate that you just heard? Yeah, you, you know, it's uh, it was interesting, too, because I, I listened to your last show, uh, and there was quite a debate on that as well. So, yeah, I mean, maybe that's, that's a good thing. You know, it's good to get ideas flowing and uh, get different opinions out there. I mean, um, if you do a lot of research into the abduction um, um, you know, side of things. It seems pretty credible. You see it. Sure, sure, definitely. If we're going to be getting to some uh, special UFOs right now. Chris, I want to thank you Great. for joining us at Third Phase of Moon. My we're going pleasure. to be, um, you know, keeping an eye out. You let us know if you capture any footage. If anybody wants to check out some of it, I think you gave it to UFO uh, Robert Bingham on his yeah. YouTube channel, UFO Robert Bingham. Take a look on YouTube. Hey, thanks again, Chris. Thank you. Okay. All right, so now we're going to end this with the top UFOs of February 2013. We're going to watch it right here on YouTube. And we're looking at this disc-shaped object flying through the sky. It is absolutely incredible, and it seems very swift and fast. I'm here with my twin brother assistant. He's the director, the guy behind the scenes filming some of the third phase of Moon episodes where you see me walking and introducing you know, he, he, he uh, you know, works pretty hard. Brent, what do you think you're looking at right here? Well, what I like about it right now is that the acceleration and the speed this uh, UFO has taken off. People say that this is some sort of drone, military drone, but what I'm looking at is this thing stops on a dime, and it's, it's just not quite military. It's, it's definitely a UFO in our book. And now we're looking at this new footage caught by Brian McPhee from Scotland of this incredibly bright light in the sky. It doesn't look like any aircraft to me. What do you say about that, Brett? Shoot, this thing's lighting up like a light bulb. It's it's definitely translucent, and it seems quite large because this thing's focused in as far as we could push it. And it's up there in the clouds. It's, it looks at least to be a, the size of a bus. And this thing is bright. We're looking at it right now, and uh, we'd like to get your opinions and comments, so please comment below. You know, every month we put out the best UFO sightings of the month, and, you know, this footage out of Scotland is quite amazing. People have been commenting on it for uh, for this past couple weeks that it's been up, and it is quite spectacular and bright, and I have no idea what this is. It is a classic UFO sighting, and we're going to be looking at some other incredible sightings coming up out of Mexico. 
Manuel Sanchez. Yeah. He's been doing a lot of work. He is a sky watcher from Mexico. His footage is coming up here very shortly. But how how does he get all this video, Brent? Mexico is just like a hot spot out there now, and it's just going off over there in Mexico in regards to UFO sightings, orbs, saucers. Sometimes they just get massive, like they get to the size of, they look like football field size UFOs. What I like about Manuel is he's creating a team out in Mexico, and that's what we're doing here at Third Phase Moon. And he's organized a Skywatcher network, and we suggest that you check out his channel because he's just loaded with UFOs all around Mexico and Tijuana. And with his connections out there, I think he's worked with Jamie Musan and other high-connected people out there. And what I suggest is to really analyze his footage because what we're looking at right now is this massive... I don't know, silver, it almost looks like a triangle, or it, it almost looks like the magician's uh, flying carpet, but it is um, quite stunning, and he does such a great job. He, he has it on tripod, he, comment, he comments through the whole thing, and he's capturing it live, and uh, we're going to keep an eye on this guy, and he promises to keep giving us whatever he gets out of Tijuana, so subscribe to Third Phase of Moon. Yeah, in Baja, Mexicali, in that area, he's covering this whole South American aspect. I'd say he's the best sky watcher out of Mexico, and his footage is absolutely incredible. And we're looking at this right now. Are storms a magnet for UFOs? It seems like when storms are going off, there's, like, conductivity in the air, electricity. Are these ball lightning? Is this a phenomenon known as a weather... Uh, kind of phenomena known as ball lightning, lightning. All I know is this object right now we're looking at just hit behind the clouds, it ducked behind the clouds, and it turned into a black orb, and there's many other lights above it. This is incredible footage we're looking at, Brent. Yeah, what I like about it, too, you just mentioned we're zooming in close on it, we're slowing it down, and we're putting in uh, quite a bit of contrast just to make these lights pop. And, uh, What's fascinating is how they go through the clouds and they change color. They're not consistent with a Chinese lantern where they just glow in the sky consistently. These things are fluctuating in color and moving fast. And that's what we like about these videos. And we get about 10, maybe 15 videos a day from around the world. And we pick the best ones and we give them to you and we let you decide. And I decide on this one right now. This this is great footage, and I love it, and that's why we posted it on Third Phase of Moon. Hey, Brent, I really want to thank you for uh, joining us on the radio show. We'll have them back. You know, Brent works really hard putting in the effort of, wow, this nighttime footage we're looking at, again, from Manuel Sanchez is amazing. And if you captured anything amazing in regards to UFOs, contact Third Phase of Moon via Skype or Facebook. And we're going to be posting live updates from our correspondent over there in Arizona covering the UFO Congress. Dr. J. Elias is working really hard getting the top interviews from ufologists from around the world, Stan Freeman, Stan Romanek, Dr. Roger Lear, and many others, and famous abductee Travis Walters. So 